So the first thing that we're going to do is install the plugin browser. Now we're going to go back to the design tab and we're going to create two simple buttons to switch between page one and page two. Now we're going to make some simple images to display as separate pages. We'll rename the image to match the page number for easy navigation and the elements tree. And we'll make a second image for page two. We need to make a custom state on the page for telling us which page we are currently on, period. We're just gonna name it page, give it no develop default value, and make it a number. Now in our conditionals for each image, we are going to say when this pages state page is the correct page number, we are going to make the element visible. And make sure to go back to the appearances tab and turn the visibility off. And we'll copy that condition from one page to the next and give it the correct number for that page. Again, turning the visibility off on the Appearances tab. Now we'll create a workflow for each button. So when page one is clicked, we're going to set the state of the main page. It's custom state page to page one to match the button. We're gonna copy that workflow Go to the page two button, start the workflow, paste it, and change it to a value of two for the second page. Preview this just to make sure that it works exactly how we're expecting it to work. And it switches back and forth between each image or page. So now we're gonna create a custom event and we're going to call it URL change. We have to add the browser element from the plugin that we installed to our page. It doesn't matter where, and it will not be visible on the final page. Now we're going to go and we're going to modify, oh, sorry, replace the URL of a browser. There's two different options here, modify and replace. They do different things and we'll get into that in a bit. But for our URL, we're going to select the website home URL. This URL will give you all of the URL, which means that you'll overwrite parameters that you already have in there and it will get really messy. So we're going to add the name of our page. Backslash URL change or forward slash URL change forward slash. And then we're going to add our main pages custom state page after that. 
And then when button one is clicked, we're gonna trigger a custom event URL change. We'll copy that and paste it for button two. We'll refresh our page. And you can see now that our URL is changing, but we have too many backslashes. So we need to go back to our URL change and make the URL change that we typed in not have a slash before it. So now we we'll reload the page and we click page one, it changes in our URL to two and one, depending on which button we click. Now if we check our history, which is being slow. There it is. You can see that we have our URL change one and two. And if we change our page, it replaces the element or the entry with the new one. This is not the behavior that we want because we won't be able to go back. It'll take us out of the page to whatever the user was seeing previously. So we need to replace the element with modify the URL of a browser. This will add a new entry to the history so that when the user clicks back, it will take them to the page they were previously on. And we'll make sure to copy our URL that we already made and paste it. And the title is just the title of your page and how it displays in the history. It's now page one and page two, they're still working. And when we go look at our history, we see that we get new entry. So if I click the button again, and I go back to my history, I have a new entry. So if I change the title, it should change it in the history to read what we put in our title thing. So we'll make it the URLs page. For some reason this isn't working in Firefox. It works really well in Chrome. So now we're going to add an event when the page is loaded, which is under the Generals tab. And we're gonna to have to get the data from our URL in order to know what page should be displayed when the user first enters the page. So we'll set the state of our URL, change page, custom state, and then we'll get data from page URL. We're gonna change the type to path segments as list, and we will do the last item since it is the last item in the URL. Oh, I forgot to change it to a number. It's currently set up as a text. So go back to the get data from page URL, change it to number, and now it's happy. So when I reload my page, it sees that there's a one at the end of the URL. And if I change that to a two, it'll reload and show page two. So what happens when there is none? This is the problem. So we have to make another set state of our URL change page state. And we're gonna set it to one, and we're gonna do that only when 
URL changes page is empty. So if it doesn't get set in step one and it's blank, it will set this in step two and we will be displayed page one. So we'll erase that and reload and it works. Now if we hit back, it takes us back to page two. Back again takes us to page one, forward to page two, and forward to no URL suffix. And that shows us page one.